on everybody, Vince Goodrum here. It is Monday evening, it is midnight, uh, just getting a little bit of uh, work done, just got off of work here, and I wanted to go over a couple of things here. Now, I'll touch base on all of the recent bodybuilding contests in a uh, later video because I'm still trying to analyze a couple of things here. Uh, part of the thing is like Hottie Chupon, for example, he brought in his best conditioning out there, but the question is, is Donald Trump going to let him into the country or not in order for him to compete at the Mr. Olympia? But, you know, in any event, you know, just wanted to make this video, uh, as sort of a, as sort of, uh, giving you guys some financial assistance here. Now, lately there's been a number of YouTubers as well as other bodybuilding and fitness competitors that have been once again begging for money there. And, you know, quite frankly, I had made a video a long time ago, four or five months ago, on making money in the fitness industry. But, you know, I got to really level with you guys here, you know, because I'm getting a little sick and tired of people complaining about their finances and starting these stupid GoFundMe accounts and stuff like that here. So I'm going to give you a bit of advice today on how to manage your finances here. And it's not going to be really bodybuilding or fitness related there. This is just real life essentially here. So let's begin with the following uh, analogy of things here. Uh, the one thing you need to do here uh, in terms of determining your finances is to get financial software. You know, it's pretty good to keep track of your expenses. Quicken is one of the most common ones. I use Quicken myself in order to keep track of my finances. If you cannot afford Quicken, there's a lot of free financial programs and open source software that you can get. You can also contact your bank as well. They can also give you a discount on it there. If you don't have a bank you and you use a green dot card, uh, you know, even they have financial software. It's not too hard, people, there. I mean, after all, if you have a computer or a phone, everyone has a phone, then you can have access to the financial software. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, and I do stress this out there, you know, and uh, this is sort of me sort of uh, mocking some of you guys up here. You know, a lot of guys, you guys clown me over having an old 1995 Jeep Cherokee and a 2001 Ford Taurus with a couple of dents in it here. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. But here's the thing. My vehicles are actually paid off there, you know. I don't make any payments for my vehicles. They run quite well. You know, I when I wake up in the morning, you know, I'll decide whether I want to drive the Jeep or the car. I like driving the Jeep personally. It's a fun vehicle to ride there. Uh... But, you know, the reason why I brought this subject up is vehicles. You know, some of you guys have some really expensive vehicles uh, with very high payments. There, you go to JD Buy Rider in order to get your stuff or another uh, company with high interest here. So, you got to ask yourself a question there. You know, if you're spending like five or $600 a month on your car payments here and you can't afford food for your children and you can't afford to pay your mortgage there, well, guess what? You need to go turn up back in that car and, you know, get something that's less expensive there, you know. A $500 payment there for a car is ridiculous, and that includes for leasing. Leasing is one of the most stupidest things that you could possibly do in terms of a car purchase because you don't get nothing out of it. You're paying this car company all this money there, and then after a year's time, They'll either charge you the full retail price, or you got to go turn back in the car. And you're left on the street walking, or you can go and lease another car, and you don't ever really own anything. Do you think Warren Buffett actually thinks about that? No, he owns his own car. He owns his own house there, too. You know, I don't expect too many people to own their house there. You know, even I don't own my house, even though uh, this uh, place that I bought, the Clayton E. Home, uh, I'll have it paid off in about two years, but that's another point I want to make there, you know, in terms of homes are concerned. If you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, you have like a $2,000 mortgage payment, you can't afford it, well, you can either go get yourself a second job or, you know, get yourself a, an apartment there. 
You know, just walk away from the deal there. There's nothing wrong with it. You're going to screw up your credit history, but you're going to screw it up anyway because you can't afford the payments there. You know, quite and simply, okay, you made a bad decision. Get out of those bad decisions here. So that's my whole thing about cars and shelter there. Now let's talk about food here. You know, me personally, I prep most of my meals. I eat out only about two or three times and only on the weekends here. But a lot of you guys, you guys are running to restaurants like McDonald's thinking it's a good deal with those dollar value meals here. Well, think about it there. If it costs a restaurant one dollar, I mean, like at McDonald's, if it costs them one dollar to make a shitty ass hamburger, how much do you think it would cost for you to make a decent burger at home? And the answer is, it's probably like 20 or 30 cents. Now, I just got finished eating a great meal, you know, a big giant piece of tilapia. I grilled it on my teppanyaki grill and some fresh broccoli. You know how much that costs? Now, if I went to a regular restaurant and had that same type of meal, it would have ran like 8 or $9. A lot of you guys would actually spend that money. You think you're also getting a deal if you're getting a special blue plate special for $6. The meal that I made, you know, only cost 85 cents here. And it's fresh, you know. And you may think, okay, I can get one of those 99 cent microwavable meals from the Dollar Tree. Guess what? They taste like shit, you know. And a lot of you guys think that, oh... I guess you have to have it packed away there. I mean, it's going to be old after three days. You dumbass. When you go to a re fast food restaurant, how long do you think that food has been sitting frozen there? It could have been sitting, it's probably been sitting there for six to eight months there. You know, I've worked in a restaurant before. I used to work at Taco Bell for, you know, for four years when I was in high school. Believe me, we've had, I noticed that there was boxes of <laughs> beef and chicken and everything else that was sitting around for eight or nine months. So let's be serious here. You know, don't eat out unless you have to. That includes going to lunch. You know, simply get yourself a lunch pail or some sort of insulated cooler. Fix your meals here, people. Get some plastic containers. You can get them off Amazon. It's very cheap to do here, you know. Uh, and just simply take, two, take like 30 seconds to go throw your meal into that insulated cooler, throw a little ice pack in there, and you're done. You know, throw some nuts in there for snacks there so you're not paying for snacks and throw a drink in there. You know, I don't care what kind of nuts you get. You know, you can get planter's peanuts. You can get your father's nuts. It doesn't really matter. Make sure you have plenty of snacks and drinks and that way you're not spending your money at the drink at those uh, vending machines. You know, a lot of vending machines, they charge like $1.75 for a drink. They charge a dollar for a crummy, crummy bag of chips, a little tiny one that you can get for 25 cents at Walmart there. But I know a lot of you fitness guys like to be healthy there, you know. So, you know, whenever you go and bring your own meals to work or to wherever you're going throughout the day, your fit personal training or anything, you know, you not only get a more tastier meal, but you also spend a lot less here, people. You understand? So start fixing your own meals. Get an insulated cooler for crying out loud and take care of yourself there, you know. These things are quite simple there. And then finally, the biggest thing is, you know, don't spend money that you simply do not have there. You know, some of you guys collect watches here and spend like $100, $200, $300 $300 like your freaking Aaron Singerman or PJ Braun or something like that. See this watch here? Huh? You see the watch? It's a really nice watch here. I'm going to hold it up really closely to you guys here, all right? This watch here, you know... People have complimented me on it there. They say, where'd you get the watch? Got it off Amazon. You know how much it costs? Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. All right? Cheap, 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 cheap. Cheap. Very cheap. I got another watch. Look at this. Big giant watch. Look at that there, you know? Does all the stuff that every other watch does. Ten dollars. Ten dollars here, okay? You know... If you, if you want a watch there, you know, you can go get a watch from anywhere, you know, quite frankly. But if you can't afford to have a watch collection, and the purpose of having a watch collection is collecting expensive watches. If you cannot afford it there, and you're spending more money on watches than feeding your own bratty little kids, then that is a situation that you need to deal with there. Go sell your watches. Take them to the pawn shop. Go take them down to Ben Casey. I don't care where you take them there. 
Get rid of your watches here. Clear out some of your stuff and sell them. Have a yard sale or something for crying out loud. Stop, buy, stop spending money that you simply don't have here. You know, it, it, it's quite simple there, you know. I mean, I can't stress to you enough there. So the only thing you really need to do, and I hope you guys get my point on this, is simply, you know, be smart with your money there because money is finite. You know, I have a good job right now, but, you know, that job can disappear at any time. Have mul I have multiple sources of income. I still run a website, and I'm still doing things with uh, companies like Advocare, and people are like, well, if you got a good job, why do you have these other things doing? Because you never know when money runs out there. You never know when a job runs out. You never know when the websites go out, you know. A lot of my online businesses were stuffed by Amazon there, you know. I mean, and that's the way it is there. I mean, times change there, you know. And business, and you have to change with your businesses there. By the way, Amazon is actually a great way of saving money there as well, so... You know, check out a lot of their deals. Get the coupons and discounts. After all, it is Prime Day, you know. Grab yourself some cool things there. And, but only grab the things that you need and what you can afford. And, you know, that's all I got to say today in terms of finances there. Oh, I almost forgot to address. Someone asked me about vegan gains and this dog there, you know, and stuff like that. You know, normally I knock vegan gains on the GoFundMe. But, hey, he was able to leverage like three, four thousand dollars $4,000 just to pay for his dog having a broken leg there. You know, Vegan Gains makes a lot of money off of his YouTube and his other channels, his Patreon account and everything. But, you know, quite frankly, I, I don't, I'm not going to knock the guy there if he's able to, you know, get $3,000 in order to uh, help out with the expenses because that's $3,000 that he doesn't have to pay there. You know, for someone with a lot of popularity as Vegan Gains or someone else, GoFundMe works. For a regular Joe like you, it won't work, okay? So you have to do what you can do in life in order to manage your expenses here. And that's all I really got to say today. I hope that hope you guys take this advice at hand, take it to heart, you know, and, well, you guys, y'all have a good rest of the week. Uh, and I'll be back to speak about bodybuilding things here because I still have to get things organized. You guys take care.